Welcome! This video tutorial will show you how to prime and start a Diamond Star DA40. Engine priming is the key step and can be difficult to perform properly, so we'll talk about ways to make it easier. The tutorial is divided into five sections and you can jump to each section in the video description. First, we examine the engine controls and engine system indicators that are used to prime and start the engine. Next, we look at a step-by-step -step demonstration of how to start a cold engine, how to start a warm engine, and how to start a flooded engine. Finally, we conclude with engine priming tips and safety precautions. After watching this video, You'll know how to prime and start the engine like a pro, and you'll know what to do when things don't go according to plan. Let's get started. Now, let's look at the engine controls and control settings that are used to prime and start the engine. First of all, here on the left side of the instrument panel, you see the master switch, which is really two separate switches. On the right side, we have the battery master switch, shown here in the on position. The alternator master switch is on the left side. Next, we have the fuel pump switch, which simply toggles on and off like the master switch. Now we are looking at the throttle lever, shown here in the full rear or idle position. It's important to note that there are throttle settings for both priming and starting the engine. As you see here, we have marked these settings on the throttle panel for easy reference. The prime setting is marked 1.2 inches forward from the rear of the slot and the start setting is marked 0.4 inches forward from the rear of the slot. Another key point to note is that the throttle lever has a front and rear edge. With this in mind, you want to remember to line up the rear edge of the throttle with the marked line. For example, before priming the engine, the rear edge of the throttle is lined up with the marked line for priming. And before starting the engine, the rear edge of the throttle is lined up with the marked line for starting. Next we see the mixture lever, shown here in the full rear or full lean position. The mixture is full rich when the lever is moved full forward. Finally, we have the ignition switch. The start position is spring-loaded, so you have to hold it there when starting the engine. After the engine starts, you release it to the both position. Now, let's look at how engine system indicators can help us out when priming and starting the engine. Over here, on the right side of the Garmin G1000, you see the multifunction display, or MFD for short, with the engine page pulled up. On the upper part of the engine page, we have the voltmeter. Before starting the engine, verify a minimum of 24 volts are available for the engine start. Next, we have the fuel flow indicator. During the engine priming step, it's important to verify an increase in fuel flow. And we'll look at this in more detail later. Finally, here's the RPM indicator. After starting the engine, you'll monitor this indicator as you adjust the RPM. We'll see these engine system indicators in action later. If the airplane you fly isn't equipped with a Garmin G1000, then just use the corresponding gauges and meters on your instrument panel. Now, let's look at priming and starting a cold engine. We begin with the battery master switch already turned on. And we have the engine page displayed on the G1000 MFD. As you recall, we want to verify that the voltmeter is showing a minimum of 24 volts before starting the engine. Now, turn the fuel pump switch on. Set the throttle for priming by positioning the rear edge of the throttle 1.2 inches forward from the rear of the slot. Prime the engine by moving the mixture full forward for 3 to 5 seconds while verifying an increase in fuel flow. Then move it back to the full rear position. 
We'll talk more about monitoring fuel flow later. Set the throttle for starting by positioning the rear edge of the throttle 0.4 inches forward from the rear of the slot. Now we are about to start the engine. Left hand is on the ignition switch, right hand on the mixture control. Coming up we have three steps that occur in rapid succession, so let's preview that. First, turn the ignition switch to the start position and hold it there while the propeller is turning. When the engine fires, rapidly move the mixture to the full forward position. Then release the ignition switch to the both position. After the engine starts, move the throttle back towards idle until the RPM indicator shows 1000 RPM. Now, let's take a closer look at monitoring the fuel flow indicator when priming a cold engine. After moving the mixture control full forward, you want to see the fuel flow increase and then level off. This should occur in 3 to 5 seconds. When the fuel levels off, then immediately move the mixture back to the full rear position. Let's look at the cold engine start again, but from a different angle. First, turn the fuel pump on. Set the throttle for priming by positioning the rear edge of the throttle 1.2 inches forward from the rear of the slot. Prime the engine by moving the mixture full forward for 3 to 5 seconds while verifying an increase in fuel flow. Then move it back to the full rear position. Set the throttle for starting by positioning the rear edge of the throttle 0.4 inches forward from the rear of the slot. Turn the ignition switch to the start position and hold it there. When the engine fires, move the mixture full forward, then release the ignition switch. After the engine starts, move the throttle back until the RPM indicator shows 1000 RPM. Now, if the engine doesn't start within 5 seconds, then immediately turn the ignition switch off. And then turn the fuel pump off. It's likely that too much fuel was added during the priming step and now the engine is flooded. We'll look at how to start a flooded engine later. Now, let's look at priming and starting a warm engine. The procedure is essentially the same as that for a cold engine, except less priming is needed. We begin with the battery side of the master switch already turned on. And we have the engine page of the G1000 displayed with a voltmeter indicating a minimum of 24 volts are available for the engine start. Now, turn the fuel pump switch on. Set the throttle for priming by positioning the rear edge of the throttle 1.2 inches forward from the rear of the slot. Prime the engine by moving the mixture full forward for 1 to 2 seconds, then back to the full rear position. Set the throttle for starting by positioning the rear edge of the throttle 0.4 inches forward from the rear of the slot. Turn the ignition switch to the start position and hold it there while the propeller is turning. When the engine fires, move the mixture full forward, then release the ignition switch to the both position. Finally, move the throttle back until the RPM indicator shows 1000 RPM. As we talked about earlier, if the engine doesn't start within 5 seconds, then immediately turn the ignition switch off and then turn the fuel pump off. It's likely that too much fuel was added during the priming step and now the engine is flooded, making it difficult to start. So now we'll look at how to start a flooded engine. But first, we'll wait one minute before attempting a restart. Now, verify the fuel pump is off. Check that the mixture control is in the full rear position. Set the throttle for starting by positioning the rear edge of the throttle 0.4 inches forward from the rear of the slot. Turn the ignition switch to the start position. When the engine fires, move the mixture full forward, then release the ignition switch to the both position. Another method for starting a flooded engine is to open the throttle more by moving it to the middle position and then retry the start. Again, verify the fuel pump is off. Check that the mixture is in the full lean position. Turn the ignition switch to the start position. When the engine fires, move the mixture full forward, then release the ignition switch to the both position. 
Finally, it's important to be aware that excessive cranking of the engine can overheat and damage the starter, and of course drain the battery. For this reason, do not operate the starter for more than 5 seconds at a time. Allow the starter to cool for 1 minute between each start attempt. After 6 attempts, let the starter cool for 30 minutes. Let's conclude by talking about a few safety precautions and engine priming tips. Before starting the engine, ensure that you push on the tow brake pedals. Yell clear prop out of the window and verify the propeller area is clear of people and any potential hazards. Now let's look at a few ways to make engine priming technique easier and more consistent. Measure and mark lines indicating the throttle settings for both engine priming and starting for easy reference. To mark the prime setting, measure 1.2 inches forward from the rear of the slot and then draw a line. And to mark the start setting, measure 0.4 inches forward and then draw another line. Remember that you want the rear edge of the throttle to line up with the marked line. Next, time the duration of engine priming as accurately as possible. If necessary, just use a stopwatch. Finally, monitor the fuel flow indicator when priming a cold engine. After moving the mixture full forward, you want to see the fuel flow increase and then level off in about 3 to 5 seconds. When the fuel levels off, then immediately move the mixture back to the full rear position. This will help take some of the guesswork out of priming and make it easier to start the engine. Thank you for watching.